So I'm here today with Joe Jones. He's the CTO of Franklin Robotics, and he's got this cute little guy working in the uh, garden behind him. Joe, can you tell me about this? So this is Turtle. It's a solar powered robot that lives in your garden and prevents weeds from growing. All you need to do is put the robot in the garden at the beginning of the season. If you've done a little bit of preparation, you push the button and let it go, and it'll keep the weeds down for the rest of the season. Wow, and so we're seeing footage right now of a garden that you have over there, which is a test garden. One has right. turtle, one doesn't. And as you can see, uh, it works. It works surprisingly well. Uh, uh, we were hopeful that it would work that well, but uh, fortunately it, it, really does, it really does the job that it uh, was designed to do. Okay, so how does it do it? Well, on the bottom of the robot, there's a little weed whacker. Uh, there's a couple of weed sensors. As the robot is driving around, if a weed comes under the bumper, it turns the, the weed whacker on and that cuts the weed down right away. Since not all weeds are tall enough to be detected by the sensor, it also randomly turns on and uh, gets weeds even when it doesn't sense them. It has a second modality that we're really proud of. The, um, just the fact that the wheels are turning around and scrubbing the soil a little bit tends to kill weed seeds as they emerge uh, uh, from, from the seed before they even uh, uh, emerge from the ground. So. That was a new weeding modality that uh, we were surprised to discover when we built the robot and started testing it. Interesting, so you said a weed sensor on the front. Is that ultrasonic? How does it know that it's a weed? For this application, we found this really, really great technology called capacitive sensing. So inside the robot, just behind the, the front shell, and uh, there's a couple more panels underneath the robot, uh, there's just sensors that sense the capacitance. And anything that is a little bit conductive like a weed or a plant or the, the garden fence, the, the, the robot will sense very easily and turns away sometimes even before it touches it. So that's how it can tell whether it's a weed versus a mature plant. Exactly. The, the turtle has a really simple-minded idea about, uh, about such things. Anything that touches its, uh, its shell is tall, it's tall, that's a plant that you want. And anything that uh, is shorter than that, that's a weed and it wants to attack it. Oh, interesting. Okay, so now I guess a quick question that many gardeners are thinking right now is how do I protect my seedlings? So we have a way of doing that. When your plants are really small, we have these um, uh, things that we call uh, plant guards or row guards and you can put these around a row of, uh, of seeds that you have just planted or seedlings and when the robot comes up to it it'll detect the plant guard and it'll turn away. Is turtle smart? I mean I don't want to offend it but like <laughs> is it uh, heading over to a weed that it sees or how does it know where it's going? So I like to think that turtle is clever but not smart okay. in the sense that it only has the absolute minimum amount of technology that it needs to have to do its job and that allows us to build a robot that's affordable by anyone, uh, but it doesn't do things like uh, know exactly where it is in the garden. It just uh, uh, moves around the garden. When it discovers something in front of it, it tries to turn away. Uh, if you just let it go, um, it will then eventually cover all of the garden. Actually, it'll cover it several times, at least several times per week. Uh, and in so doing, it'll get rid of all the weeds. Interesting. Now, in your testing, have you found that it ever just like stays in one corner of the garden? Like, how does it how does it cover the whole garden? So uh, there's some tricks. Uh, I was one of the inventors of, of Roomba, and we learned one of these tricks uh, during uh, the Roomba development. And that is sometimes the the robot should just detect something and bounce off, and other times it should detect something and follow it. Oh. When you follow uh, occasionally follow walls and such like follow walls or rows or fences, it tends to take you to different parts of the garden or different parts of the room in Roomba's case, uh, but it, it improves overall coverage. That, that little tactic improves the overall coverage. Oh, so it's kind of a random, sometimes I'll just bounce off, sometimes I'll follow. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Oh, interesting. So now um, gardeners who are watching and wondering, how do I keep this little fellow in the garden? So any uh, place that you want to use turtle, you have to have some kind of a barrier around it. Otherwise it will wander away. So it doesn't, uh, I have I kind of a elaborate fence here. This was built to, to keep the groundhogs and the, uh, and the chipmunks out. It doesn't have to be nearly that elaborate. All you need is something that's uh, like three or so inches tall, uh, ideally conductive, and that'll keep turtle in the garden. Oh, interesting. Okay, so wood, brick, anything would work. Yes, actually it would. Now, this has been designed primarily for vegetables, I'm assuming. That's right. Uh, is there any vegetables that it won't work with, like, like super leafy ones or something like that? The kinds of vegetables it might have the most trouble with would be really low vegetables. So if you have uh, 
for example, strawberries that are growing right on the ground. If the strawberries are shorter than the bumper, then a turtle may think that your strawberry is a weed and try to attack it. So if you've got plants like that, the best uh, advice is to put the plant guards around them to, to, to keep turtle in its place. Interesting. Now I see that it's got a big solar panel on the top. So does that provide all the power? Uh, the solar panel on top provides all the power that, uh, that the robot needs. Uh, we did, however, provide uh, supplemental charging, so there's a, a port on the bottom that you can connect a USB charger to, and if you do that, um, uh, you can make R Turtle run more than the hour or two it would normally run just using the sun. How, in, in your testing, how have you found it to work on just kind of average days, like, uh, you know, when it's cloudy out and so forth? So, um, <clears throat> it tends to collect enough energy overall to, to take care of the garden. Clearly, uh, our rule of thumb is, if turtle is sitting in the sun, uh, it, it'll run for like an hour or two uh, each day. Uh, if it's a really cloudy day or uh, an overcast day, uh, it may run for about one sixth as long as it would normally run just because it has less energy. I found it interesting that you said that turtle is smart enough to kind of find a sunny spot in the garden to charge Yes, up. so we have a, uh, it has a behavior where it tries to keep the battery at a certain level of charge. So when it falls below that charge, it doesn't just stop immediately. Uh, when it falls below that level of charge, turtle continues to wander around a little bit and looks for a place where the, it's getting more power uh, from, the, from the solar panel than uh, on average. And it assumes that that's a sunny spot and that's where it stops. Um, so if people watching right now are like, yes, this sounds great. I don't have to break my back to go weed. Where can they go to check out Turtle? Uh, you can go to turtle.com, T-E-R-T-I-L-L. -L. Um, uh, it's on the, our website. Uh, we'll tell you all about it and you can buy the turtle there. That's cool. Now, I saw on your website that you're not shipping yet outside of the U.S. and Canada. Is that coming sometime soon, maybe? We would, we're working on that. We're not shipping to the European Union because we don't have a CE mark yet, but we're, we're working to get that, cool. hopefully next season. Okay. Cool. So just get ready, folks, if, yeah. you, if you're not there yet. Awesome. Um, and what's been the feedback like from gardeners that have been using it? So uh, it's been great. Uh, there was uh, one guy in particular who said uh, it was the first time in 32 years that he had come back from vacation and not found that his uh, garden was a jungle. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's really, I mean, it really does work. The, um, we got some great validation. Uh, we have uh, 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 some researchers at the Cornell School of Agriculture and at the University of Maine have both tested turtle and the folks at Cornell concluded that it works as well as hand weeding. Wow. Joe, thank you so much for having us out at your garden today and showing us turtle. This is really cool. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming. <laughs>